All right, so welcome to part two of the discussion. We're going to go straight into it from where we left off. So, so we'll talk keep about. Up. Oh, we'll talk about what we've learned from each other's cultures. Yes. So, if you listened or already watched the first one, this is a continuation of the same conversation. Yes. Enjoy. Yeah. And we just do, if you didn't watch, we made these cards and then we'll talk about the different elements of each other's cultures. That's how it works. So let's go. If there was the first one, they'll see. Okay. All right. Okay, next. Holidays and exploring. It's also a Dutch thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, do you want to comment on that? Yeah. So I learned that um, structure doesn't always make things fun. But <laughs> Dutch people have also been able to structure holidays and fun into their like yeah. planning. So social activities are something that are taken very seriously. I used to fight with her a lot when we were starting, like uh, when we started talking, because when Elaine goes out with her friends, when she says we're having a coffee, we're having a beer, we're going this, she turns her phone off, she's present, because they know that when they're working, they're working, and when they decide to go and have a holiday or have fun or explore they something, out. they tune out and they are present and they enjoy it as much as like, you know, they have to. So there's no in-between where you're on holiday, but you can still answer some messages or some phone, uh, phone calls or whatever it is. Yeah, it's mostly very well planned and they make sure that they enjoy everything because when they come back to work, they are stuck in the workspace or in the work uh, frame of mind. And holidays and adventure is something that, yeah, it's culturally been ingrained into... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, been ingrained into their way of living. Um, here, holidays, ex exploring, traveling, is now building up. It's now becoming a thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's because travel for us, again, we've said that in previous videos, travel for us has always been a practical thing. We're for going, family. We're going here today to see family and yeah. we're not going to travel Chill. for the sake of it yeah. and just have fun somewhere else. So it's one thing I really appreciate about, you know, social activities and the importance of social activities in your, you know, lifestyle and schedule and making room for it, actually. Like they, they make real room, save for it, plan for it and make sure they actually execute it and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, holidays are very important in the Netherlands. Yeah. Like, they're, like, holy. And they're always, yeah, it's something people really plan for and look forward to. And, like, some people even, their life is, like, uh, you say, spins around their holidays. You know, that's how important the free time is. It's really, um, yeah, sacred in the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next. Bread. Bread. We've talked about it. Bread. <laughs> My favorite. Bread. Bread. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You want to say something about it or you're okay? That's I'm done. Yeah. So we eat a lot of bread. <laughs> like bread for breakfast, bread for lunch. Even for dinner. Yes. You can eat bread. Yeah. Bread, bread and soup. Bread, bread, bread. Everyday bread. That's our main meal. I have to say I've came back from my opinion on bread because of Ghana. At first I really missed it when I was in Ghana, the bread, like the bread, like whole wheat bread and Yeah, because you have things. variety and it's fresh. Such a that's variety. the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. They like bread, but it's not boring in my opinion. It's a, it's a bit much because culturally that's not how I grew up. But it's not boring. Different types. Always fresh. Always like yeah, you can go to any bakery and get fresh bread fresh. any time of the day. Fresh, always fresh. So yeah, it's not boring. But <laughs> when you go to restaurants, it limits your options a bit. For example, when we go to restaurants in Netherlands and Grammys used to a warm meal during lunch, Oof, right? My God, in Netherlands it's difficult to get a like a warm meal for lunch. And yeah, so the bread it's a cultural thing, and. You, we just have to live with it, but I think we can make our find our own middle way with it because sometimes yeah. you wouldn't mind. I was bread. I was adapting. Yeah. I was adapting because then I was now researching f 
fun sandwiches, different ways to eat bread. <laughs> so that yes. And sometimes we will build our own sandwich, like with a lot of egg and bacon. I'll and fry lettuce. my eggs. I'll put yeah. my mayo or whatever inside. Put yeah. ha cured ham. Put some, you know, rockets. Oh, yeah. You know, make it more, you know, juicy and yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll eat. I'll eat. Yeah. But so I need to. We've learned. I can't just pick up bread and cheese or bread and and just eat it because. Bread. Yeah. And bread is here is not seen as a meal. Whenever I eat a sandwich at work, people are like, oh, when are you going to eat? I'm like, I just ate. Yeah. Oh, but bread o is not a... Over no. here, you go to the hospital and you've had maybe bread and maybe hot chocolate or Milo is what we call it. Like, Milo is the most popular chocolate drink. Um, yeah, that's an ad. God damn. We want to be sponsored by Milo. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you had your bread and uh, Milo, which you call tea as well. Why your bread need tea? And then you go to us when they ask you, have you eaten? And you're like, no. Yeah. But you've not had anything today. Oh, I had bread and Milo in the morning. Ah, but you've had something. <laughs> so we don't consider bread like a meal meal yeah. on its own. Okay. Yeah. That's enough. This is yours. I know. Ironing. Yeah. I've learned from Ghana how important ironing is. Yes. I never ironed in my life. I only iron things if they would still be a bit wet, like from the washing machine, from when you wash it. You iron it to dry it out a bit. Then I would take out the iron. I had never ironed in my life to make it look neat. It was not a thing I've grown I, up I with. I found it very surprising that I would see somebody just pick up a shirt, a shirt, like a dress shirt from the laundry, like, you know, it's dry from her closet. And just put it on. Yeah. And pants and in just put it on. In Netherlands, ironing, or at least in my experience in Netherlands. And just show up. It's not a thing. Ah. Yes. Did you look at the mirror before you left home? <laughs> you see? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> like, he, I am now the opposite. Yeah, now she wouldn't Honestly, wear any. Now I she traveled, wouldn't wear anything without I ironing. I traveled to um, Niger. I was in a hotel. I brought a few things. I wanted to iron. There was no iron for two days. Wow. I literally texted him. They're still not ironing. Um, they're still not iron. I'm getting itchy. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> when it was iron, I was so happy. I went out for dinner. I was like showing off my shirt and my, my skirt. It was nicely ironed. I was like, oh my God, who am I? I was literally <laughs> overflowing with joy because I finally got my iron. <laughs> If you would have told me this five years ago, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> Joy of ironing? Can you imagine? Uh, so he really like took this to the next level for me. Yeah, because like when we when we when we started dating and started living together, um, anytime she would visit before we go out, um, like oh we're about to go out to go eat somewhere, and I'm ironing my even t-shirt. Yeah. I'm ironing my t-shirts or shirts, you know. And then she's just picking up her clothes to just hey, bring it. You bring our ironing for yeah. you. We're not Ram going is out. very good at ironing, I have to say. We're, we're not going out with you looking oh, <laughs> yeah. like. But there's also another side. There is a dark side of ironing. <laughs> what is because it? Because now, sometimes when I wear something, I get very anxious that I'm not sure if I should iron it or not, or if I iron it well enough. And then I uh. have to ask him like, is this okay or should I iron again? When it comes again? to flowy dresses. Yeah. Um, so ironing also, when you do learn ironing, especially when we do from, uh, from very early, you know the kind of fabrics and how to iron them. So linen, cotton, you know, polyester and all those things. Polyester don't touch with heat because it's just going to melt. melt. So you know which ones to iron and which ones not to iron and how to iron them. And when it comes to flowy dresses, I think that you don't necessarily have to iron pleats and lines because they are also, you know, they just need to be flat. Um, yes, yeah, seamless, like, you know, so that it's also flowy. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, adding to that, Ghana, Ghanaians, oh, I generalize now, but okay, I'll generalize. Ghanaians are very good at, like, presenting well. Yeah, and keeping dressing tidy. Neat, yeah. tidy, smelling good yeah. is also a thing here. Yeah, but smelling good is it's, 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 it's a form of good manners. Yes, but it's taken very seriously here. While yeah. in Netherlands, 
Mm, it's, I mean, people like to smell good, but you know how people dress in the Netherlands? They just put on something and go. Sometimes it is not also as because, neat. No, also because, yes, and also because, one, the weather. It's different. Yeah, you're not sweaty all the time. That's true. That's so true. it's not musky in the air and everything. Yeah, that's so, true. But over it's here, you're... It's easier to stay neat in Netherlands, yes, but people also put less effort into it. Here in true. Ghana, ooh, sometimes when we go for dinner or we go out somewhere, and I'm just looking at how amazing all the ladies look. Yeah. And properly I'm ironed. Properly ironed. Nice dresses. Makeup done. Yes. Hair done. Nails perfume. done. Perfume. Yes. Small back. Cute back. Everybody's looking like... And I, I am enjoying it so much. So we, we go by the dress, by how you want to be addressed. Yes, definitely. That's, that's but how for we, me, it's we such go. an inspiration to see all these amazing dress by how you ladies want to be and how they dress. And I'm just admiring them. Sometimes to give them small compliments like, girl, you're looking fine. Because... It is such a joy to look at. And of course, there's also another side of that that sometimes it might give people stress and all. But I, I really learned stress. that to look a certain way. I mean, it can give people pressure as well. Yes, there's a pressure, but okay, yeah, the extra. But yeah. when it comes to the basics of ironing, bathing, ironing, and perfume, there's no pressure because we've been raised. So it's not difficult when you've been raised like that. Yeah. But for me, it also shows a bit of self-care. Like is. how you go to the barber, like you make sure everything is neat. It is. It's a, it's a moment for yourself. You are taking care of yourself. You are worth it. So for me, I also see the self-care, which I think is great. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Hi, Renee. <laughs> Respect. You want to say something about it or should I say something about it? You can say and I can say. So respect is a really, it, it's connected to greetings as well. So it's respectful to greet somebody and acknowledge them. Respect is a big thing in Ghanaian society. Mm -hmm. You have to greet somebody. If somebody's elder, you need to make sure you approach them respectfully. Um, it's a thing. And there's a lot of hierarchy in Ghana as well. Um, I don't know why that is. I feel it's more, Netherlands is more horizontal. Yeah. So even culturally, if you are... Culturally, we are, um, I think we roll with bottom up. I yeah. think the youngest child is the one doing the most chores. Yeah. And then there's respect, respect. And even in... Parents and then um, grandparents. Junior and senior high school, your seniors, there's this hierarchy. Yeah. And in Netherlands, even... I remember from, I had a training with a lot of different people from all over the world and they were so amazed by how the Dutchies in the company would address the manager. Like, hey. <laughs> you just go by your first yeah, name. Yeah, first it, name and here, no, no, no. Yeah, no, don't do no, that. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't go by your, your boss's first name. Ah, you don't respect. Yes. Especially, okay, especially also when they have like a, um, some qualification in terms of like Doctor. a doctorate or yeah. you know something. You need to put it always. There. Please don't come and say Philip, just like Philip. Do you know how long it took me to get this doctorate? Yes. Who do you think you are? But also <laughs> respect is also in a marriage. Sometimes, like the role of the man or the traditional role of a man in the household and the traditional role of the wife in the household. It has a certain respect kind of dynamic, right? Yeah. Maybe more less with our generation, because yeah, our generation is a step further it's than it's maybe newer. your mom's generation. But uh, I remember that sometimes when I speak to Kwame in public, I mean, I just speak to him. Like we have discussions also in public. It's not that I don't respect him, but we ch exchange thoughts. But. I know it's not normal, for example, to have such discussions in public because it might look I don't respect you as a husband I because never, I'm I've, talking I've, back. I've, yeah, but I've never... Have you ever seen somebody react? It is subtle. Oh, ah, okay. So I've never paid look, attention. You know? I've never paid attention to people looking and feeling like, ooh, she's talking or she's... Because yes, I talk. <laughs> I'm not looking there at all. So but how a lot do you of, see that? There's a lot of respectability or respect, yeah, respectability politics. Yeah. Yeah, that we play. And 
sometimes somebody's wrong, but you can't tell them they're wrong because you respect yes, them. Yes, you have to. Which is, is, is detrimental to our, our development, in my opinion. Because, yeah, I can tell you you are not doing your work well or this thing you said was uh, silly or stupid mm -hmm. or not wise enough. If you think you're old and you're wise, your age doesn't come with all, yeah. all wisdom in the world. And sometimes people would uh, find it difficult to come to terms with the fact that the fact that they are older doesn't mean that somebody who is younger than them can be wiser than them. Yeah. Your brain but, is not all yeah. knowing. And to, to add to that, I do like, I mean, I like the horizontal way of working, yes. But I think, and then you have the Ghana on pretty much the other side of the coin. But I like a lot from Ghana how you treat your elderly. Because in Netherlands, ah, yeah. it is not good. Yeah. We, we see, maybe because we're so focused on productivity and efficiency, but we see elderly people because they don't produce anything, right? They're, they're old, like they're not working. <laughs> we see them a bit like... Liability. Yes. Well, here in Ghana, I like that you go to elderly people for advice, advice or they've seen to it learn all. something. Because they've seen like, it all. How your mother cooks, I can learn so much from it, you know? Yeah. Like because she has done it for years and years and she can teach me well. So I like that there, there's also certain respect. And I like that because yeah. you honor more their experience and how they have already so, lived. So yeah, our, our respect um, when it comes to that in, in the social aspect is, is more of uh, life experience. Yeah. Yeah. And you value that. Yes. While in Netherlands, it's like, nah, I can't speak for everybody, but I feel it is less respected in that way. Yeah. It is, you're less part of society once you're past a certain age. While... And unfortunately, that is also changing in Ghana. Yeah. Unfortunately. It's not extreme yet, but it's, it's the, the generation after us, or is it a Gen Z or something? They, 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 do, they, they, they do less of their respectability politics yeah. um, and life experience thing. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, but it's, I learned that from Ghanaian For example, culture. somebody would get up oh, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. let yeah. Uh, an elderly person have their seat in a car. I think in Netherlands, people do that, but it's rare. Yeah, yeah. so these small things. Anyway, um, it is me. It's me. Checking in, I wrote this from Ghana culture. So, um, in my experience, is that Ghanaians are really good at checking in. So they will call you, just two, three minutes, just checking in on you, how are you doing? How's family? How's this? How's that? It's nice. In Netherlands, at least when I call with my friends and family, it's often long. Yeah, but the, the average person won't check in on you. They won't check in. Yeah. Well, WhatsApp is a good way to check in, but I rarely get a text like, hey, I'm thinking of you, I hope you're good. Like something like that, it yeah. won't happen. Well, in Ghana, um, I feel people do that more often. And I like that. Yeah. That it's a bit like, community. I'm thinking of you. Yeah, yeah a community. community. But thinking of you without necessarily like having an hour or something to spend with you. It's just like, hey, or people call a lot when they're in the car from work, like, hey, how was your day? My day was like this, oh cool, what are you gonna do this weekend? Not sure yet, okay, let's text, something like that. It's, it's, it's breezy, it's, it's flowy, I like that a lot. And I still need to learn that a bit, because I sometimes forget with my friends in Ghana, like, oh, I can just send a text like, hey, what's up? What's up, how you doing? Yeah. yeah you know, and, and even that two minutes is enough. Yeah, or even do like drop a voice note and stuff. I as well as when you come and visit somebody, they want to stay and make sure that you got home. Text me that you got home. Yeah, I always. It's forget. important. It's not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me know you go home. I'll text. Have you got to know? Okay, good. Now I can like I know that you came to visit me and you've made it back home safely. I can sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have to check. I appreciate in. that. Yeah. And the final one. For you. I wrote this one. Entitlement. Entitlement. Who's, Can who's, I comment on it? Please. The Dutchies. <laughs> so, 
I notice a lot that Dutch people are a bit entitled. They, even if you look at our history, please people, look at our colonial heritage. Going to places and claiming that going, we're going to you, random you've, places you're and claiming that saying you've discovered, this is mine. You've discovered land. Ah! Didn't you meet humans there? Oh, I'm so like, I have loads of feels about this part of that colony, English colony. I Didn't won't you unpack there? that now, but there's a certain entitlement even to that train of thought, and it's not only Dutch people I know. The whole the West has this kind of entitlement. Who goes to a place you don't know and say, this is mine. I have never done that in my life. I'm a guest. Anyway, let's not unpack it. So that's one thing. Our history shows a bit of entitlement, not a bit. Uh, but also in this system, it, because in the Netherlands we have like a welfare system. And people often have the kind of the feeling that they have a right to something. A right to comfort, a right to care, a right to, like, they, we deserve this. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad mindset, but I think instead of always looking out for this other person should do this, or the, the government should do this, or I have the right to um, check yourself. <laughs> yeah. And that I like about Ghana, the people check themselves. What can I do? How can, like, what is... But we, could also, we could also use some level of entitlement. That's true, because we Ghanaians also, don't ask for a lot. Yeah, we could also, we could also use some level of entitlement. We, we, we settle. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, so I think there is a negative aspect of entitlement, which we've seen from, you know, history till now, which is helping a lot of um, the Western uh, countries and Western people. Because um, somebody can just move from America to Ghana and not think twice about it because they feel that they can go anywhere, they can be anything. Yeah, there's certain so it's to ingrained it. in their minds that it gives them some, some kind of confidence. It's, it's, the confidence tends to cross certain lines at most points, mm -hmm. but at least they have the confidence to feel that they can do certain things without thinking twice and they can just be because yeah. they have a right to be. And I think it's something we can also learn from, especially with keeping, you know, um, governments and leadership and people who are in charge of development accountable, yeah. because we do also deserve certain things. Yes. That we are entitled to as a people. And if we're choosing you as, you Our know, leader. leader, then we demand that this happens. You're accountable. You're doing this. There's, uh, it affects us in the most positive way because... That is why you're there to do it. So I think that level of entitlement also um, needs to be learned over time for us. Because on average, I would never think that, oh, I'm just going to up and go and start a new life. Yeah, you know, somewhere. Somewhere. On the planet. Like, I'm just going to move from Ghana and start a new life. Because you go with a lot of caution mm. in that sense. You go with a lot of caution. But Europeans, Americans, people from the West... We just buy a ticket and go up and leave and come and exist somewhere and form a new life and build something from scratch. So, yeah, entitlement has lot, good yeah. and bad parts. I but hope I like how you connected entitlement to like accountability. Yeah. So there's another side that entitlement also kind of keeps you accountable. Like this is what you should do. We have the right to do this so as leadership you should do this yeah and I we, we deserve like it. it yeah so that i i do agree. i mean i'm a foreigner so i can't say much but i feel that Ghanaians settle quickly wow you deserve so much more yeah we deserve everything good so, yeah yeah give it to us but people don't really demand it from leadership and sometimes that makes me sad it's also because it's also tied to that respectability politics Ooh. So many layers. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to offend them by saying that, ah, please. But I have to say, what I, and it's not on the cards, that's probably my last point because we talked long. Uh, I do like that in Ghana, you can talk freely about politics. Like if you drop into a taxi or a trotrol, something thing. is on the it's radio. Just, it's something that binds us together. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. and even on the radio, like look at uh, the City Breakfast Show. Yes, we want to be sponsored. No. 
says no. I'm kidding. They talk freely. They call literally the leadership. Like, what's it's, up with this? I, I also, yeah. You promised this. But it's not this. exactly too free. Why not? Yeah, people get in trouble for saying, saying certain yeah. things. Uh, but it's not like... Okay, I'm not going to name countries because maybe they'll come after us. No. <laughs> okay, but there's a certain freedom of expression that I really appreciate in Ghana. No. It's similar in Netherlands. You can say anything, um, which sometimes is also a problem. Uh, we won't go into that now. Yeah. But uh, I do appreciate that. That's something I've learned from Ghana as well. To You can talk to anybody about certain developments in Ghana. Or what do you think of this? Or the president did this. And you have a whole half an hour discussion. And there are so many angles to it. Yeah. People really like to talk and discuss and they're interested in what you have to say yeah. i think it's a good thing yeah it's unique i think yeah i agree so yes this comes to or this brings us <laughs> to uh, the end of this video uh my name is kwame i'm elaine and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel subscribe like the video share it yes. let us know what you agree and disagree on in the comments yes it would be but nice be nice please it's Will okay. I say please? Yes, please. But please, please, yes, please. But please let us know in the comments what you think <laughs> of the different elements. Please. And then uh, we are always, not always in the comments, but we do see it. Yeah. So if you have anything to add, we would like to hear it. Um, our channel is called Me. Plus you. It's us because we talk about our experiences. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy we did this, sharing about our cultures yeah. and what we've learned um, i enjoyed it good good we'll catch you in the next one see you dag lieve mensen bye Doei. Oh, i told you it was long <laughs>